Welcome to our Fall 2020-21 release, Introduction to Engineering Design webinar. My name is Ashley Benny, Director of School Engagement, and I will be one of your chat moderators for this webinar. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few tips on how to maximize your webinar experience. Join the conversation by engaging with fellow participants and PLTW subject matter experts in the chat. If you have questions, please submit them through the chat. Our facilitators and subject matter experts will be monitoring the chat for your questions and will answer as soon as they are able. They will also be available to answer questions at the end of the webinar during our live Q&A. If time doesn't allow for us to answer all questions in the live environment, Please know that after the webinar, you will have access to an FAQ document with answers to all the questions that we received in the chat. We know this year is unlike any other, and there's a lot of different things as educators you're trying to balance. Over the last two years, we have been working on the new Introduction to Engineering Design curriculum to provide the best, most relevant experiences for our students, and we want you to feel prepared to facilitate this new course this year, despite everything else happening. Today, we will review some of the larger changes in the course, hear from our partners at Autodesk and Dremel to talk through some of the new equipment and supplies, and then highlight the existing resources that are available to make your life easier, including update training, distance learning resources, and embedded resources that have been created to help you as you navigate new software equipment and supplies. Like mentioned previously, feel free to ask your questions in the chat, which we will be monitoring throughout the presentation. We will also end with a live Q&A. I'd like to now pass it to Gerald Holt to walk through the new IED course experience. Ashley, Thank you very much. Um, sorry, this is Deb. I, uh, I actually got the link from Gerald, so it has his name on the uh, on my uh, picture. But it is Deb Calvin, Senior Director of Instruction for Engineering. I apologize, I used the wrong link. Um, but I will uh, talk about this slide for just a minute. Um, when we first began to consider revision to IED, we spent a lot of time gathering research and data. And Gerald, in a few minutes, is going to talk about some of the areas of research that we used to create the new IED. But in the end, the big picture improvements in IED fall into three big buckets. One, increasing the hands-on activities for students. As the team began planning the IED update, we worked with schools across the country to collect feedback from teachers and students so that we could create a course that best met their learning needs and optimize student learning experiences. And one of the big pieces of feedback that we got continuously from across the country was a lack of hands-on activities for students in IED. So with that in mind, we've significantly increased the number of opportunities that students have to learn new content and to actively apply what they've learned through minds-on and collaborative design work. The second big bucket that the changes fall under is a deeper immersion into mechanical and 3D design. IED has been reimagined as a mechanical and product design specialization course. And Gerald's gonna talk more about the specific content topics embedded in the new IED. And if you're a veteran IED teacher, you're gonna recognize many of the same engineering science topics that were in engineering or in IED before, like mechanics and materials. Um, but you'll also notice more emphasis on topics related to engineering design and product design in general. So keep an eye open for that. The course also includes frequent and strategic use of CAE, which is computer aided engineering to support design and problem solving in the course. Now CAE includes CAD, but it also includes important features beyond solid modeling that support engineering design and decision making like computer-aided manufacturing, simulation, and some other exciting features. Guillermo from Autodesk is gonna talk more about the CAE features in Fusion 360 in a little bit, um, but those CAE software um, pieces that we have included in IED actually even go beyond Fusion 360. The third big bucket is in-demand and relevant experiences. So 
IED was rewritten to provide more opportunities to teach in demand and transferable skills through industry relevant experiences. Engineering is a rapidly evolving field and demands a lot of different skills than were common in the field a generation ago. But the new IED reflects the industry challenges and integrates in-demand skills that are transportable to all industries and not just engineering. So students apply critical thinking over and over as they tackle all of the challenges presented in the course and have opportunities to practice things like project management, collaboration, multiple forms of communication, and they also have an opportunity to consider and grapple with ethical issues relevant to the challenges that are embedded in the course. So as you'll see in a few minutes, the problems that students tackle in IED reflect real world challenges and issues relevant to students and their communities, as well as projects that um, I think you'll find students feel are fun and interesting. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Gerald and let him walk through uh, the process that we undertook to develop IED and, the, and some of the changes for the course. Gerald? Excellent. Thank you, Deb. Mm -hmm. well, we wanted to do this well. So throughout our development, we focused on understanding the needs of the network and collecting feedback from input from multiple sources. One source was well-respected, published research on secondary engineering education. So examples of this are Gen Z experts, engineering grand challenges, ABET, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, and ASEE. Another source was the IED Advisory Committee, which was composed of industry, post-secondary, and IED master teacher representatives. Another source is we held formal summit IED feedback sessions during 2018 and 2019. And in the spring of 2019, we got teacher feedback on the instructional design plan. We tested the curriculum in live classrooms through the alpha testing during the 2019 and 2020 school year. So all of this research and testing led to the new IED. And here is a comparison of the previous and the new IED course. So all this research and input from stakeholders was used directly in the instructional design process. And PLTW continues to strike that balance between the need for continuous improvement and minimizing the impact on the network. And one way this balance is achieved is through design constraints on the new IED course, such as the national standards alignment change was minimal. The PLTW frameworks needed to retain the majority of the learning objectives in the previous version of IED frameworks were maintained. And two exceptions to note, the objectives related to static equilibrium were removed and the skills related to hands-on technicals, drawing views and strict dimensioning excuse me, rules, although still included, were de-emphasized. And another major constraint was to maintain the cost of consumable equipment and supplies to close to the previous version of IED. Now, this close alignment between the previous and new should minimize the disruption for teachers to make the transition. So what's new in the course? Well, the course recommendation is 10th grade to support the more rigorous application of mathematics in the course. And this aligns with the change to high school engineering pathway suggested sequence for a better student experience. However, it's important to note that ninth graders can still be successful in the course. Now the course is 3D modeling egg software agnostic to provide more flexibility for implementation. And teachers will need a reference point. So a decision was made to adapt Fusion 360. Now Guillermo from Autodesk will go into the benefits of the software in a few minutes. So new equipment that was introduced. First is a 3D printer. Now a 3D printer is a tool that can produce a prototype with enough accuracy and predictability that it makes the testing step of the design process now meaningful. In contrast to a crafts level prototype construction, a 3D printer prototype can be tested and used to make a real design decision. Now the curriculum resources are available to help teachers make the transition from a 3D printer merely being a trinket maker to using a 3D printer as a design tool. Another equipment introduction is the VEX IQ construction kit. 
to build a prototype of a design concept. The VEX IQ construction kit is very fast to produce a mechanical prototype without motors, sensors, or a microcontroller. The previous IED had no robotics equipment, nor does the new, new IED course. There's a hobby motor in the new IED equipment list that provides a way to convert a hand crank assembly in a motor driven or into a motor driven assembly. The VEX IQ construction kit provides a cost effective, fast prototyping capability. In addition, we have an exciting additional resource in the engineering pathway, which is the general student resources. So the GSR. The general student resources or GSR started as an internal reference during EES development to serve as a source of truth for engineering concepts. At some point, the team recognized the power of providing a reference tool for engineering students needing to refresh their memory or to help a teacher build a bridge for a student that did not have the benefit of learning foundational skills in an earlier course like engineering essentials. The GSR is available for all PLTW high school engineering students in any course. And now for an overview of the units in the new IED course. You'll see the return from 10 units to four units. Each unit is strategically scaffolded within itself to be more deliberately aligned with the PLTW APB model teaching and learning approach. Within each lesson, each activity scaffolds to apply learned knowledge and skills to the lesson project. The learning from activities and projects are then applied to the unit problem. And here's a, an example of a scaffold through unit four, which is based on the automata. The unit four problem to design and build an automata is introduced in the beginning of unit 4.1. And this is a pattern of each unit to start with the end in mind. Now, lesson 4.1 activities have students analyze mechanisms that create motion through a reverse engineering of a wind-up toy and analyzing pre-built VEX IQ models. Students create a crucial component of an automata, which is a CAM. Now, students create a CAD model of the CAM and build a physical prototype. The CAM design process is not just a guess and check. The students mathematically model their CAMs and simulate its motion in CAD to design a CAM with predictable motion. And this is one example of IED being an engineering design course, not simply a crafts course. A lesson 4.1 activity scaffold to the project 418, the shoebox automata, where students build, design and build a small scale automata. And in lesson 4.2, Students learn about the good and bad impacts of friction. Students apply this knowledge to improve their earlier automata design in project 425, the automata design challenge. And in 4.3, students learn about simple electrical circuits, including motors and a variable resistor. Now, students apply this knowledge to automate their automata in project 433, automata redesign. And unit four leads to the problem 441 all together now when students modify their automata to work in a common drive. Overarching each unit scaffold is the explicit application of professional skills such as communication, collaboration, and project management. And the course includes research based formal instruction to build these professional skills. I'd like to introduce Nick Gentry from our business operations team. Thanks, Gerald. Today we wanna to share the opportunity to connect with uh, some of our key partners to hear more about our course updates. As many of you know, Project Lead the Way partners are key to the success of our curriculum. Autodesk and Bosch Dremel are two key partners supporting this IED rewrite, refresh. And we are going to give them each a few minutes to talk through the new supplies, equipment, and software that you will see in the course. If you have questions on either of them, please submit them in chat and we'll do our best to get to them today or in the FAQ document shared alongside the recording. 
First, I would like to introduce Guillermo Melantoni from Autodesk, who will be discussing Fusion 360. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, well, my name is Guillermo Melantoni. I've been working for Autodesk for, for quite a while, I would say. I lead both Tinkercad and Fusion 360, or part of Fusion 360 team. And I just wanted to, first of all, super excited to be able to share a lot of things about the product with you guys today, and mostly how to get you started. So if we can go to the next uh, slide, please. Um, first of all, just Try to understand a little bit what, what is Fusion 360. Maybe many of you already have used it or tried it or heard about it. Um, many of you probably already use Inventor in your, in your curriculum on, on PLTW. And, uh, and what Fusion is, has been trying to address as a product and also as a differentiation with, uh, with other products in, in both in Autodesk and other, other places is to be a full platform for product development, right? So meaning that it goes from the very beginning from conceptual right with with meshes with teeth lines with even be able to maybe get a quick sketch from sketch sketchbook into into the product into detailed design into validation of the design with simulation into also uh, getting further in the design with generative with generative design into manufacturing and manufacturing can take many shapes here right manufacturing could be uh 3d printing uh as you have heard i mean uh, this is something that's that you'll have access to it and, and, and it is very central to what Fusion 360 does, but also CNC, right? So any, any sort of subtractive manufacturing, laser cutting, uh, I mean, the